So we've had a ton of information on Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 drop on us recently and that got me thinking that now would be a good time to run through the system requirements for Flight Sim 2024 and see if our PCs are going to be up to standard. So we have this handy table here breaking things down by minimum, recommended and ideal specifications. Starting at the top, there's no great surprises, a minimum of Windows 10, and it seems DX10 is now required for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. Now, this is interesting because on Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, we had the choice of DirectX 11 or DirectX 12, with 12 being labeled as beta. So good news here in that DirectX 12 can hopefully be considered fully baked in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. Now this recommended specs table is pretty good, but it's not the best I've seen. There is quite a lot of detail missing. If we compare to a system requirements chart for the new God of War that's coming out on PC, you can see that they do a similar thing. However, they also give you an idea of the performance and quality level that you can expect. For example, here it says with the recommended specs, you're likely to get 60 FPS on average at 1080p with minimum settings. Whereas what we have here for Microsoft Flight Sim 2024, that detail is missing. So let's start things off with the CPU, arguably one of the most important components when it came to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And my gut feeling is that it will be a similar story with 2024. Why is that? Well, it's because the sim can very quickly find itself CPU bottlenecked. Take my system, for example. We've got a 4080 Super with a 5800X3D. And even when I run things on ultra settings at 4K, the GPU quite often is only around 60% of its overall capacity. This is because my CPU is the component that's holding it back. An easy way to think about being CPU limited is like this. Let's say your GPU has the power to render something at 200 frames per second. However, your CPU only has the power to render 100 out of those 200 frames. So your frames per second is limited to 100 frames per second. Your CPU limited because the CPU is the limiting factor. In the case of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, we found ourselves main thread limited a lot of the time. That is, we're limited by the single core performance of our processor. This is because the sim doesn't really scale that well over multiple cores. You could move from a fast eight core processor to a fast 16 core processor at great expense and see very little difference in terms of performance. Now, I don't know what sort of work Asobo has done under the hood for Microsoft Flight Sim 2024, but my gut feeling says we're still likely to be CPU limited. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I'd love to be proven wrong. I guess we'll, uh, we'll find out in November. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's start looking at the minimum specs. So we're looking at some fairly old parts from AMD and Intel. From AMD, we've got the 2600X and from Intel, we've got the Core i7-6800K. Both of these are six core 12 thread parts, the AMD 2600X being from 2018 and the 6800K from Intel being even older from 2016. I'm presuming that you're not going to be running the sim on ultra with parts like these as upping the quality, particularly the terrain level of detail on Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, not only increased the load on your GPU, but it also significantly increased the load on your CPU too. Still, it's good to see that some older parts like this are still considered to be playable. Sticking with the CPU and moving over to the recommended spec, it's a bit of an odd one. We've got a much newer 10th gen CPU from Intel being recommended, the 10700K. And from AMD, we've got the Ryzen 2700X. Now, I can get behind an Intel CPU that's four generations newer than what we saw on the minimum specs. That's fine. Um, but there's really not a lot of difference between the 2600X that we saw in the minimum specs and the 2700X we're seeing in the recommended specs. Other than two extra cores, there's not much going on. And as we've just discussed on Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, more cores didn't really do much to help the situation. I mean, fair enough, if we look closely at the differences between the 2600X and the 2700X, uh, the 2700X has an extra 100 megahertz on its base and boost frequencies. I did wonder if maybe the cache was different on the 2700X, maybe that's why they went for it, but no, it seems they're the same too. So the only thing I can conclude is that either this chart is a bit iffy and maybe a 3800X or a 5800X should be in here, or maybe that more cores actually does help Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. I can't quite see it though, but uh, you know, again, happy, happy to be proven wrong. Over on the ideal specs, we're now seeing some more modern chips. We've got a Zen 4 chip from AMD with the 7900X and a 14th gen from Intel with the 14700K. As with the recommended specs, I can get behind the choice for the Intel chip, the 14700K. It's a, a good solid chip, albeit after um, all the issues with the degradation that's been going around lately, 
maybe I'd steer clear of that for a new build. I mean, that's a whole other story, though. Like, Google it, you'll soon see. Uh, but with the 14th gen, we need to also uh, recognize that they've gone for a, a big little architecture, which means they've got eight performance cores and 12 smaller efficiency cores. For gaming, though, I think we can consider this CPU as a, as a fast eight core CPU at its core. But the 7900X from AMD strikes me as an odd choice. It's a, a 12 core part, again, leaning in on the whole more cores is more better that we've kind of been seeing so far. Uh, where again, with Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, more cores isn't going to help you. What you really want is fewer, faster cores, ideally with a boatload of cash, which is why the 5800X 3D and 7800X 3D chips from AMD have been so popular with Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. The X3D in the name means that AMD have layered a big slab of cash on top of the processor cores, and Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 absolutely loved that cash. So I'm surprised to see the 7900X uh, being classed as an ideal chip here and not an X3D chip. The other thing with the 7900X is that it's not one big 12 core chip, it's actually two smaller chiplets that are six cores each that are joined together to make up your 12 cores. Now, if indeed Microsoft Flight Sim 2024 can spread itself out over many cores, which to be clear, I don't think it will, but if it can, there's a performance penalty if a CPU task has to be moved between the chiplets. A single 8-core chiplet found on the 5800X, 5800X 3D, 7700X or 7800X 3D would have been preferable in my opinion, especially the X3D versions. It's going to be curious to see if Microsoft Flight Sim 2024 get such a performance boost from the X3D chips in the same way that Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 did. So all in all, I find these recommendations a bit confusing, especially on the AMD side of things. The go-to advice for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 has generally been the X3D chips from AMD, and they're not seen here. And the recommendations we have got, they just seem a little bit odd to me. Right, let's move on to the GPU. And for the minimum specs, uh, we see we've got the RX 5700 and the GTX 970. Uh, now this is a bit weird to me, as the RX 5700 from AMD is a GPU from 2020, whereas the uh, 970 from Nvidia is all the way back from 2014. The 970 being a 4 gig card and the 5700 being an 8 gig card. Now not only that, but if we look at the GPU power index uh, relative to the RX 5700 here on Tech Power Up, you can see that the GTX 970 is getting on for half the power of the RX 5700. Now these figures from Tech Power Up are just round numbers, so take it with a pinch of salt. But there seems to be quite a big spread here. I guess if we take them at their word, then you've got a lot of cards that will sit in between these two that will presumably be suitable to classics such as the 1070, the 1660 Ti, heck, even the uh, RX 480. But yeah, again, this just strikes me as weird. What's even weirder is that when we look at the recommended GPU settings, the first thing we see is a 5700 XT from AMD, which also came out in 2020, and according to Tech Power Up, is only around 9% faster than the 5700 non-XT. We were just uh, being recommended in the minimum specs. So... Yeah, this is uh, all kinds of wonky, in my opinion. On the NVIDIA side, they're saying a 2080 will do the job. Uh, note that's a 2080, not a 2080 Ti, uh, which according to Tech Power Up is around 20% faster than the 5700 XT from AMD. Cards that sit in between those two include the RTX 4060, the 3060, the 2070 Super, the AMD 6650 XT, and even the ARC A770. In fact, it will be really interesting to see how or if Intel stuff can run on the SIM. So there's a good spread of 8 gig cards here that are reasonably affordable, and you know, they should do the job nicely. So it's good to see you've got some fairly good options here. Up to the high end, and we're now being told we need a minimum of 12 gig of VRAM, up from the 8 that we had for recommended, and 4 gig for the minimum specs. So we're seeing the likes of the 4080 from NVIDIA be recommended, and the 7900 XT from AMD. So we're into the high end here. Again, though, they haven't told us what resolution or FPS this hardware is targeting. So maybe you're running something like a 3080, or a 4070, or a 4070 Super. I'd wager you're still going to have a really good time on the sim, especially if you're not running at 4K, maybe you're on a 1440p panel. Now here's where I was shocked. This is the first game I think that I've seen where 64 gigabytes of RAM has been recommended. Now fair enough, this is on the ideal specs, but blimey, 64 gig. 
32 gig is on the recommended specs and 16 is now the minimum gone it seems is eight gigabytes of ram 50 gig of storage is required allegedly though if you're going to download lots of add-ons and mods like i have you're going to need to budget for a heck of a lot more than that i think i'm up to nearly three or four hundred gig all told now on my sim so lots of weirdness going on and lots of room here for interpretation of course we won't know for sure how it performs until it's out but get subbed ring the bell as you can guarantee when it is out i'm going to be putting it through its paces and seeing how flight sim 2024 compares to flight sim 2020 will it be more efficient will it allow multi-core cpus to put more of their cores to work i don't know i don't know sitting here now i really don't know i remain unconvinced but i would love like genuinely i would love to be proven wrong Leave us a comment. Let us know what you're going to be running Microsoft Flight Sim 2024 on, or if indeed, if you're going to run it at all. Or maybe you've got some questions. Leave it below myself, or maybe someone else can uh, point you in the right direction. If you found the video useful today, please, please, please leave a like as it helps the video and the channel an absolute ton. And like I said, get subbed so you don't miss any future content, specifically our performance analysis of Flight Sim 2024 when it's out. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, folks. Take care, be good to each other, and as always, happy flying.